blah, 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 intro, intro, me doing cool shit, let's get into it. All right, so a little bit of a longer video today, just gonna talk you through an upper body pull session. So this is the first movement, it's a chin up with weight. This would be my third set, so I've done a couple of warm up sets, um, probably with like 20 kilos, 32 kilos, and this one's 40 for six reps. And um, yeah, you can see I'm, I'm just focusing really on not arching too much at the bottom as I initiate that pull up. So you'll see on this one, this will be a heavier one. Um, I'm finding it difficult not to arch my chest. I need to be able to keep my ribs down and actually kind of use my full scapular strength to initiate the pull because I want this stuff to carry over to one arm chin training. So you'll see there, there's like a little bit of an arch and my left scap does some funky things, um, but we're working on that. So this is three reps at 50 kilos. And by the way, my body weight is 93. If anyone's wondering, and I'm 191 tall, so six foot three. Uh, yeah, and then we move on to some more straight arm and ab elements. Again, I'm trying to kind of shore up my anterior chain. So I want to be able to keep my ribs down. I want to be able to um, translate my pelvis forward as I come into hip flexion and be really stable through the scaps. So this is a great one for that. Um, toes to bar, especially if you start to make it like a single arm bias, will be great for the bottom position of your one arm chin work um, and just overhead stability in general. Here's a variation that's a little bit more challenging. You only come down halfway, thought I'd give this a crack. Um, I think I only managed about five reps and then got pretty cooked, but it just removes that element of momentum that you get from the bottom. Um, and rope chin, so this is a wonderful one again for developing pulling strength because the the grip is often a weak link and integrating a strong grip with a strong shoulder blade is a secret to fantastic pulling strength. The rope forces you to actually grip hard. With this one, I'm pulling with my elbows a bit more in front of my body. I'm not really retracting. I'm not really bringing the elbows back and that's because I'm targeting the lat again. I don't really want the rear delt. I don't really want that arching style chin up for this particular purpose. Here's some single arm hanging. So this is two minutes, I believe, of 30 seconds per arm, just alternating passive hang. When I say passive, I'm not completely relaxed. I'm allowing my scap to elevate, but I'm still controlling the rotation of the wrist and I'm still aware of my breathing and my rib cage position. So I don't want my ribs to flare forward. I'm doing my best hopefully in this video, <laughs> to breathe through the nose as well. And I often look down when I'm hanging at how my ribs and pelvis line up. So you can kind of see me looking down a little bit there. Um, and also I'll play with my neck and my head and sort of have a bit of a stretch, try to free up all the different lines of tension or stiffness or gunkiness that might go through the back of my body. So passive hangs like this, um, a really a great indicator that you've got decent range in your shoulders and the trust to just hang from one arm and not have to do anything fancy. Like if you can just jump up and grab a bar or jump up and grab onto a tree and hang off one arm and not really have to protect yourself by contracting, you can just trust in your joint. That's a great sign. Um, but you will see that after this, I'm going to do some active hanging work as well. So one more set on the left probably. Um, and then we transition into our active hangs. So here you can play with like pushing the pelvis forward a little bit and imagining the sternum dropping down and back towards the tailbone. So this will restore your natural thoracic curve and the thoracic curve is what enables the scapulae to reach to their full extent. That rounding and reaching meaning the expansion of the back ribs or the thoracic curve plus the opening of the shoulders is um, highly valuable and something that I lacked because I did a lot of sort of arched back pressing like bench press and heavy barbell press when I was younger. So here are active hangs. You can see straight away that my serratus and my lats are active. So serratus is the little muscle um, straight under the armpit basically. You can see a little bit of a lump there. Uh, and yeah, I'm just pulling down forward and towards my opposite hip with my hand. So it's kind of a cross body motion, this active hang. I used to try to do active hangs just by pulling my shoulder blade down and back. And that put me in an arched position and actually felt quite unstable for my shoulder. And it did take me um, 
a few weeks of training to be able to regain this ability to, again, keep my ribs down, uh, keep my pelvis pushed forwards and pull in this cross body direction. Another thing that will help build towards one arm chins. Um, at the moment, I'm not actively training for a one arm chin, like as in it's not at the forefront of my focus. I'm just looking for healthy, stable shoulders. I'm just working on my weaknesses and I want to progressively overload those weighted chin ups to get them up to around 80% of my body weight. Um, but it is nice to have these things in the background. Sometimes you don't have to be chasing a particular goal super hard in the short term, but you can just have it floating there in the back of your mind. Um, and that enables you to have some kind of intention or direction behind your process. But at the same time, you're not bound purely by that external goal. Uh, you can kind of rest into the now, just rest into doing what needs to be done, not get too specialized in your outlook. So here it is again. You can see I'm kind of contracting my left side. I'm like reaching, um, I'm kind of curving my body towards the hanging arm. And that's another example of wanting to load up my left scapula and kind of use that as the, I don't know if fulcrum is the right word, but um, that's the point at which I'm going to sort of wrap over and pull my body into if I were to initiate the beginning of a one-arm chin. There you go. Now some pec opening. So one of the things that that can happen if you do a lot of pulling work um, without taking your arms way behind your body is you can just end up with a little bit of tightness in the pecs because the pecs are involved in pulling. Um, so this one is great. I just do like the German hang half of the skin, the cat, so that I can really release through those pecs. Um, I'm supinated with my grip, e.g. underhand. So when I go down, I'm feeling a bit more of a bicep and pec and shoulder stretch than I would if I was overhand. Um, and also you'll notice at the very bottom, I'm slightly externally rotating. So I'm kind of, I'm not staying in protraction. I'm trying to open up and retract my shoulders. And here's some shameless posing. Uh, I don't do this that often, but lately, since I've been training some more weighted, heavy upper body movements, I'm just kind of enjoying looking at myself. Alrighty, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any thoughts, queries, comments, questions, drop them below. You can also email me directly at hello at attuned.space. Catch you later, guys.